Babe, how much longer do you have? I honestly don't know what I'm wearing. What's new? We're about to start prep for the Radio City and everybody's coming into New York, all the Jonases. So Danny and I talked about having both families come in for dinners, the Delises and the Jonases. Everybody's here, why not? You can't tell everybody casual and like throw a dress on. Well, dress and wedges is still casual. The last time that both families were together was at our wedding, so this is a really big deal. Are you excited about this? What is that face? It's nerve-wracking having both families come together. I just I want them to get along, and I feel like now I'm gonna see if they do get along. Well, how are they gonna get along if they don't get to spend time together? Anyone would be nervous. I'm not nuts expect, for being nervous. N expect nothing. Then anything good is better. Do you think that we're gonna get in trouble if we use paper napkins? Do what you want, it's your house. I know, but when I, I just don't know if that will impress. <laughs> you know what? Don't use paper napkins. Well, because I'm Don't use paper napkins. I'm using regular dishes, because not you're paper gonna... dishes. It's a nice dinner. You should you be you should nicer dinner. We should be putting na regular napkins out. When does a boy even know that kind Why of Why did you ask me? Because I thought that you would be like, Danielle, it doesn't matter. That's what I said at the beginning, then you kept coming at me. What do you want from me? I'm not gonna win today. <laughs> oh my god. It's true. Do you... what you want, Dan. Ow. These gays, they're trying to murder me. What do I think of her? Yes. I don't think of her. Dolls, Hi. who's ready for your <laughs> for your weekly uh, fisting of Jonas Brothers lore? We are deep in the pits. In the I hole, am, I am elbow deep up Joe Jonas's asshole right now, you guys. <laughs> At any minute, I am going to control Joe Jonas from the inside like mm. a flesh puppet. Okay, like some ventriloquy. <laughs> yeah, Anal we are... ventriloquism. That is how deep I am of Joe Jonas right now. It's Bone down deep, bad, as it's they say. Like hour twelve or something also, at this point. Of again, Jonas we're not saying anything positive or negative about Joe Jonas. Like we know that he's a shithole. This episode is going to just <laughs> confirm what an absolute scumbag he is. But once again, unfortunately, history has vindicated me that. Joe Jonas at this episode in particular, 100% would. Sorry, 100% would. <laughs> it's 100% okay to admit that. Would. You have to be honest 100% would. When you read some of these interviews, you're going to look at me like I have <coughs> legitimately lost my mind. You're going to say to me, Joan, we are literally staging like a 5150 intervention on you. Like, you know what's it's, funny? Is I feel like it's all, I mean, obviously it's all about Joe, but I feel like it's all, it really is all about Joe, as the history has shown. Like the headlines only really care about Joe. Like Kevin's like, I mean, no, he's people care about Nick, weird but looking, Kevin... and <laughs> Nick is too young, and we don't really. He has diabetes. So that's a separate welcome, issue. Like, welcome. <laughs> like Joe You're is sure. just no. Joe. Wait, can we put that on a? Can we put that on a? Can we put that on tote bag? He has diabetes. That's a separate issue. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast where Joe Jonas is hot and Kevin Jonas looks weird eating for free. My name is local Joe Jonas thirst trap taker, Joan Summers. Oh my God. And this is um, the pineapple juice on Nick Jonas's <laughs> nightstand, Matthew Lawson. Did you not see the that TikTok everyone was sending us? <laughs> they're like, wait, why is he drinking pineapple juice? And they're like, it's for his diabetes, girl. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to say it's for the the cum taste. <laughs> what? Girl. No, I know. It's just it's just funny. Is it funny? Is diabetes But do funny? you know? <laughs> Could be both. <laughs> Two for one. Um, guys, hi everybody. Um, it's so good to be back with another episode. Um, if you are just now joining us and have somehow been 
parachuted into part Part seven seven. of the Jonas Brothers series. I guarantee you that we have an episode back in um, March of this year called Pop Music That Fucks. And that's probably where you would like to start if you want to get the complete lore. Otherwise, you can start at part one of this series. Um, And today we are going to be diving right into the ultimate downfall of the Jonas Brothers. So this episode spans three years. It spans the end of 2010 and then 2011 and 2012. This is the penultimate episode of our series. It has been a long time coming. Um, I was just thinking like, remember how we did a series about Ariana Grande? We did like that was like seven or eight, eight parts weeks too, also. including bonus and episodes. Then, yeah, <laughs> and then uh, we're on uh, week seven of the Jonas Brothers. I'm like, and don't forget I... Selena and Justin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this Ooh. this this whole year, like, I have legitimately started to tell time by the series. I'm like, that is oh. the seasons, honestly. I'm like, oh, we're in. Um, it's not. It's not November. It's not November right now. It's part seven of the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> We're in, we're in Jobo finale. Now. Yeah, we yeah penultimate episode got timed. You know, as they say, it's always darkest before the dawn. And actually, in terms of the Jonas Brothers, it only gets darker from here. Um, this is the episode where the sun starts setting at four thirty four in the afternoon. <laughs> How are you? And everyone's just unhappy. Sa- let's, let's do some uh, daylight savings time talk. How are you adjusting? Oh God, having a dog, it's actually pretty rough. I won't lie. Like, really? So, and yeah, because she's like, bitch, where's my food? At like what would be a regular time, but yeah. daylight savings has other, you know, expectations. But yeah, otherwise, I'm fine. It's not that big of a deal. Officially set the sun today at 4 50 p.m. <laughs> um, and I just really the whole time I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? All I can say is every year this happens and we're all fools for being shocked. But at the same time, everyone hates it. Like, why are we can still we doing not, this? Can we not, though, time it? Like, on years where history is literally happening, can we not time daylight savings time as I drive back from a historic pro-Palestinian march on Washington? Like, can we just, like... <laughs> collectively agree that that's like a bad time to change the time like maybe it's a PSYOP, maybe honestly, get, in the like end. can i do it like the taxes where i can file for an extension where i'm like <laughs> you know what we're not doing this right now you can just move to arizona they don't acknowledge it the, but then i have to live in arizona, arizona. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the a land of worse a, than death a, a place where everyone is if kevin jonas was worse like <laughs> Um, I feel like we should just go back to what people were doing for literally millennia before, which is we only work when it's bright. And when it's dark, we all go home and do whatever we want because it's yeah, ridiculous. No. To everyone now that works it, in an office or works late, like literally love and light. Cause no, it's one of our here. friends said that um, as soon as the sun goes down, you can't ask me to do work. And yeah. I've never felt that more. I know than people this schedule a meeting at 4 30 p.m. I'm like, it's literally nighttime. <laughs> it's night. No. It's not fair. It's not no, okay. I'm a farmer of information. I'm a exactly. farmer of the digital highway. I'm not getting anything done right now. So, um, guys, I'm really just stalling because we have... This is flop era. <laughs> uh, a, a headline here that is um, truly disturbing. Um, it is Mr. Clean is happy to be miserable. Nick Jonas <laughs> on Life Apart from the Jonas Brothers. Oh, wait, that's wrong. That's not the first headline. I was going to say. Why is that at the top of our notes? Where are you, girl? No, I deleted that because it was really nothing. That's where we're at. <laughs> We are at a place where I'm being haunted Mama. by the phantom specter of a Joe Jonas article that I didn't feel like taking notes on. <laughs> How about that? How You're about like, that? I saw the past and it was dark. No. So instead, we're going to jump to instead November 2010. Um, <laughs> I was going to say this headline's even worse. <laughs> this headline is even worse. Um, I like that they called the Daily Mail called Nick Jonas Mr. Clean. I just think that's funny. Why would you call they? him Mr. Clean? I've, we've been saying this for like, I, I guess, a million years at this point. The Daily <laughs> Mail has like a sick fetish with like the Jonas Brothers. They have like, a, like, they have like some hairless of thing going on. Sexless body. Um, so, okay. 
In November, we're picking off uh, right where we left off last week, where Demi Lovato gets kicked off of the Jonas Brothers tour after assaulting a dancer, a backup dancer, on a plane um, from, I believe they were in Mexico. Yeah. Um, so the New York Post reports in uh, November 17th, 2010, that Demi would be staying in treatment for Thanksgiving and that any statements made on Demi's behalf by sources that had been talking to the media that she would be home by the holidays were false and that she would be continuing treatment through the new year. Um, At the same time, we start to get a real inkling that things are not working out for the Jonas Brothers the way that their management believed they were going to work out when they first set out with plugging them into really what at I think we have now discovered was like a payola machine, right? There was yeah. what we could describe as like the star making playbook that Disney had operated on and had been very successful with through the Hannah Montana years. Um, and the Jonas Brothers kind of come in at the zenith of all of that kind of like star making potential and they get plugged right into it. And it's like right out the gate, things just line up perfectly for the brothers. Everything is perfect. They are smooth sailing. Like literally the second their very first public appearance is cemented on the Disney Channel, you know, they're already being positioned as like the next hot band. And because children, we have discovered through this series and really through Justin Bieber as well, Um, and Ariana Grande a little bit less so because Ariana really like made her impact as an adult. Whereas, you know, we saw Justin really start to pop off as like a literal child. Yeah. Children and the people that these people get marketed to are rather gullible. I think that that's like something that we can say is generally true. They're not just gullible, but they are also incredibly impressionable and so if you put the jonas brothers on the disney channel and you're like these are the hottest band out right now and you should love them at that time when web really hadn't taken off and teenagers weren't like plugged into the tiktok matrix and could kind of like stay abreast of things the way that they can now that was just like our reality in 2006, 2007, right? It was like, oh yeah, the Jonas Brothers. And by the time Camp Rock came out, right? When they were filming Camp Rock, they were literally nobodies, essentially. Well, this is also, like you just said, this is when kids didn't even like really have internet access that easily. It was like the family computer era. You know, we weren't like, yeah, on TikTok, on Twitter, like talking shit, messaging people. 100%. Sussing out the industry plants. So it was really easy to kind of like rig the system in favor of the Jonas Brothers. And- it was also very easy for them to like be positioned in Camp Rock as if like they were huge. And that was one thing that we talk about in our Camp Rock episode where it was like, wait a minute. When this came out, they were nobodies. But in the universe of Camp Rock, adding to the myth making potential, they are these like hot off the presses, bad boy <laughs> pop stars that are like so famous that they have like international reputations when really they hadn't even put out their first Disney Channel album at that point. Yeah. So. And it's funny we, thinking about that too with Camp Rock. We, I just said earlier, it's all about Joe. Joe is also like only the real, he's like the real actor of Camp Rock. I mean, the other two yeah. are in there, but they're just, they're kind of background supporting compared to Joe. So it really is like Joe is the front runner Disney bet all their money on. Yeah, like you said, with Joe being the front runner, what really starts to happen is like, as the band starts to come undone internally, as we know now, you can start to see the outward signs of that playing out in the moves that their management and Disney are taking around them. And I think really where we start to see that their manager was like floundering, Johnny Wright, as well as Hollywood Records really was also floundering to figure out how to market these teenagers that very quickly became not teenagers anymore, right? They're like, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? You have Justin Bieber coming up right on their tails and really cannibalizing like huge swaths of their fan base and kind of positioning himself as the de facto tween star, right? Um we don't talk about it in this episode, but like almost immediately when his first movie comes out, his concert movie, he like is literally number two or three 
<laughs> on the top concert yeah, movies of like all time. Decimates right? everyone else. He's like ten spots above the Jonas Brothers, right? Like it is very quickly established that the power rankings are completely and wildly off. And also that their management is wildly out of their depth in a digital age, a digital age that really does not rely on the Disney machine for relevancy. So the Blackstreet Boys and Sync and the Jonas Brothers all have this guy that we talked about last week in common, their manager, Johnny Wright. He announces that he is putting together, and this is part of that like weird, like streaming pre-era where it was like (laughs) your direct to cable packages that would like have like on demand you know such a specific era i don't think kids even know what on demand means (laughs) no no so it was like on demand for at&t's uverse tv service oh yeah and Mm -hmm. aol um put together this web series with johnny wright quote on the spot johnny wright's quest for the next pop sensation where Johnny Wright is basically going to be accepting video auditions for aspiring musicians 16 to 30, where they were then going to go through boot camps and challenges in LA with the final band being chosen in 2011, after which they would be mentored by one of the Jonas Brothers. It's right? giving very X Factor American Idol esque. This goes nowhere. We're not actually going to get into the person <laughs> really that this kind of plans out for until the next episode, because they aren't a huge player in this story. Um, But really what's interesting about this is like, if you really look at the fine details here, the internet is where Justin Bieber was discovered, right? And Justin Bieber precipitated an age where we talk about it um, in one of our more recent episodes of the Jonas Brothers, that like studios are looking for people who come to them fully packaged, right? Oh, yeah. They want you to have a fan base. They want you to have marketing. They want you to have lingo and a catalog. And they want you to basically front all of the like marketing and kind of like front end packaging before they ever sign you, right? Like the age You're quite of, literally be market tested. <laughs> yeah. The age of like discovering a singer songwriter on American Idol, a la Kelly Clarkson, died very, very quickly once streaming came into the picture. And Justin Bieber really helped spur that along because they were like, look at this kid. He has a fan base online. We can just literally pick him up online, put him in some A&R sessions. We can get him in front of some songwriters. We can put him in a feature. And like very quickly, we already have the groundwork laid out for him, right? And part of that groundwork isn't just like having fans that are going to automatically buy your music. It's also showing the studios how to market you, right? You've already done the market testing for them. You've done that market research by showing them that like little girls age this to age to this age in these states and with this kind of like general financial background and with this musical taste and these habits online are going to be who we need to market Justin Bieber to, right? The Jonas Brothers didn't have to do any of that. The Jonas Brothers were part of that like old system where they kind of just got plugged into the Hollywood records machine and immediately started going on world tours, right? Yeah, because they because the only experience they really Channel. had was Nick's like religious Christmas music and yeah. like some off they were just child actors, like very run of the mill child actors. Yeah, you can almost say that they were cast in a role that was going to exist yeah. with or without them. Exactly. Them so, just being brothers all similarly age is just like the perfect recipe yeah. for making that so work. We, so I really wanted to focus on this to begin this episode that like it is notable that as the band internally is falling apart, their manager is turning to a web series to look for an online star because of the competition it from must Scooter be Braun and surreal Justin Bieber. to be like i'm already over and we just got started <laughs> yeah so as, as um, we talked about last week when like the managers and people at disney were even like literally your fan base is aging out of you and the young people don't want you anymore and the people that are your age like are already the most unattainable audience so yeah. they basically have to plan like one to two years ahead before you like career might even end to have the next one ready to go yeah 100 percent and it um you know we have a little bit more relationship stuff going on ashley green who plays alice colin in twilight was like briefly <laughs> dating joe jonas um and they break up 
in March. That's really all we need to know about Ashley Green. Um, <laughs> at the same time, in April of 2011, Joe is one of the uh, you know featured interviews in details, which does not exist anymore. Um, and Joe Jonas is announcing around this time that he is actually breaking off to do solo music and he will be releasing a solo album. He's getting into the studio and unlike Nick, this is an actual solo project, right? It's not Nick Jonas and the administration. It is Joe Jonas. He is going off as Joe Jonas to make music. So we have this interview in details and we're just going to kind of read through this here. Um, Matt, do you want to go through this first paragraph instead of indents. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Joe Jonas is grocery shopping, walking along a busy commercial section of Hollywood. No one notices him. No twin girls shriek as he weaves through the sidewalk traffic. Joe doesn't much look like a Jonas brother anymore. Gone is his telltale luxurious sweep of black hair. Now it's cropped in a look of one of its handlers likes to call top gun, Tom Cruise. And he's wearing a rackish beard and mustache along with skinny jeans that hang low enough to reveal the pattern of his boxers. These signs of testosterone seem to defy the boy band's squeaky clean image. The three brothers wore purity rings, pledging chastity until marriage. Joe 21 looks all grown up and there isn't a purity ring in sight. Um, like we said, this publication is not around anymore, but we have a link to the web archive. So if you want to see the photos, they are pretty hilarious. <laughs> they are really good. It's exa- they are the really way they describe really it is good. exactly what you can imagine. No, it's literally. And again, wood. <laughs> um, does anyone wood. ever tell you you look like Joe Jonas? I get that a lot. Joe says in his mild, soft-spoken way. Or they'll say, oh, you're so much cuter in person. Or where are your brothers? He laughs. It's not like we wake up in the same bed. Joe moved out of the home he shared with his parents and his brothers, Kevin, 23, Nick, 18, a year and a half ago, to run a house with some buddies in Los, oh, in Los Feliz, specifically. Where I live, but it was yeah. ha- <laughs> But it was haunted, he says. We'd hear footsteps, and he often thought about getting his own place. Then, about nine months ago, he started dating Twilight star Ashley Green, and the idea of a little privacy became more appealing. So last November, he found a bachelor pad in his part of town, which he likes because, quote, it's like my mini New York. I got my gym a few blocks away, where he's been working out five days a week with his trainer. He says, I'd like to watch all the crazy characters in the neighborhood. I saw this. I saw this gay homeless guy who got arrested. No, Matt, the- <laughs> Matt, li- like, read this sentence I'm already again. like, wait. <laughs> read this sentence again. <laughs> I'd like to watch I'd like to watch all these crazy characters in the neighborhood. I saw this gay homeless guy that got arrested. When the cop said spread him, he was like, You like that, wouldn't you? Joe grins. He likes a good comeback. Uh <laughs> literally a absolutely demented way. Now, this is the interesting part. I don't know where they are where they are, because there is a like Trader where they're doing Joe's. this interview on that side of town, the Trader Joe's is in is the Silver Lake Trader Joe's, right? Yeah, like this where isn't it. Yeah. I mean, I did grocery shopping all the time over there, but this is ten years ago in, too. It likes his. Well, no, it would have been there then also ten years ago too. There's also the Trader Joe's in Hollywood, like on the Walk of Fame, and that seems like a little bit more like where they are, if not that. There's also that Trader Joe's on, um, oh, fuck. It, for those of you who lived in L.A., there is um, that, like, weird part. It's not weird. It's like, what is that street on, like, the two, on two, on the two. Oh, girl, I can't I remember know. what that street is. <laughs> but um, uh, there's, like, that one right there. There's, like, a fat burger right down the street and the Smart and Final right there, too. What is that street? Oh, Santa Monica Boulevard. God, yeah. Fatburger. I just was like Smart looking Final at it from the California. sky and I couldn't see what it was. I was like, <laughs> what is that? No, it's the one on Santa Monica. And that also, that might be where it is too. Cause that one's like a little bit closer to WeHo. Um, I'm just like, I'm just like wondering where it is. Is it the, cause there's also the one. Okay. Sorry. I just like not to be like as a person who knows where all the Trader Joe's are in uh, LA, <laughs> but there's also the one by the laugh factory. Um, 
I don't know what that neighborhood. You're called, just assuming the like, grocery goes to is Trader Joe's. No, because he goes to Trader Joe's a little bit later in the piece. Oh, okay, like, okay. They're walking. He's walking <laughs> to Trader Joe's right now. But like, if you were in Los Feliz in 2011, I mean, I guess where that Trader Joe's is. Gags is, who lived in LA and specifically Los Feliz during 2010. Maybe, but like, they're like he's reach out. dodging crowds. The idea of like the dodging crowds and there's like a lot of people there that just like wouldn't have been that like that just wouldn't have been the vibe i mm. think so i think it's probably the one in west hollywood on santa monica he's like which one has the most fans because like hyper i just i'm just like trying to imagine hyperion ave like having like crazy busy amounts of crowds in 2011 Huckers. like that neighbor like silver lake hadn't really popped off like that yet so anyways mm. i'm just like doing la geography talk <laughs> much to think about um, much to think about in addition to hitting the gym regularly joe is also a fan of bars in the area like the bowery on sunset because, oh yeah quote, so it's the one in weho it's the I was gonna, yeah, yeah because it's quote really laid back Wait a minute, didn't the Jonas Brothers, who provided the voices of cherubs in 2009's Night at the Museum Battle of Smithsonian, swear off alcoholic <laughs> beverages? I'm sorry, I have to say that often. Oh my god, the ones who did the voice of the cherubs in 2009's Night at the Museum Battle of Smithsonian? <laughs> yes, but that was back when Joe was living with his mom, Denise, and his dad, Kevin Sr., a former evangelical preacher who now co-manages the band. It was also before Joe decided to do a solo album, the first single from which will be released next month. Joe says, I'm growing up. The fans are growing up. I've gone through a lot of stuff in my life so far. There are these stories I haven't really been able to tell. When you're writing with three people, you wind up with a sound that might be not average, but you know, expected. Okay, Shane. <laughs> the moment he walks into Chair Joe's, there you go. The sound system starts playing Year 3000, a Jonas Brothers hit from their first album, 2006, It's About Time. The boys' cheerful guitar riffs and boisterous voices fill the giant store. Quote, I didn't call and arrange this, Joe says, amused as he grabs a cart. No. No, listen. I believe him, but I'm like... "Mm." No, that's what I'm saying. People that's at Trader Joe's, maybe saying. they definitely know who you are, especially a Trader Joe's employee at this time would absolutely know who Joe Jonas is. <laughs> okay, but this is also what I'm saying. This is also what I'm saying. I just think it's like crazy to be Joe Jonas and literally go into a Trader with, Joe's anywhere. <laughs> yeah, go to go to the Trader Joe's on fucking santa monica with your interviewer like Mm -hmm. not only is that like the worst trader joe's in la actually probably the one on the hollywood walk is also pretty bad too oh god they have one on the hollywood walk yeah it's like right over there (sighs) it's pretty like i I don't know if that one would have been existing at that time terrible vibes oh god i mean just also like uh, anyways (laughs) i just hate that neighborhood so um we get another little bit later. I also just love gay homeless man. The like, how do you know he was gay, Joe? I bet if you asked him, he'd say something um, that wouldn't age very well. <laughs> he likes to come back. <laughs> I wonder what accent he was doing when he uh, uh, oh, said that to the interviewer. That's the only real question. Imagine. So <laughs> later on, the interviewer writes, but the boys in the band aren't really boys anymore. The sales of their recent albums have slipped. Their 2009 Disney Channel sitcom, Jonas L.A., didn't catch on with viewers and was canceled. Their debut film, Jonas Brothers, The 3D Concert Experience, was a disappointment, earning just over $19 million. The thinking at Disney HQ seems to be that a solo turn by Joe might be a way for the brothers to recapture their maturing fan base and possibly develop a new one. We're not breaking up. We're just taking a break, Joe oh, says. It's I over. really have a hope for the fans <laughs> that older and went, quote, you know what? I'm really not into the Jonas Brothers anymore, that I'm able to catch their ear again with my project. And they're going to be like, hey, this is cool stuff. I'm happy listening to this. I'm not embarrassed listening to this. So he's also saying our music sucks. I mean, when he was like, well, when three people write, you know, music, gets, it gets a little expected. Or <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. later in the piece, he talks about um, he's getting like, they broken suck, up with all and suck. breaking up with Taylor Swift and like if there's going to be any breakup albums on it. And he talks about getting broken up with by someone on one of the songs. And the interviewer asks, but who would break up with Joe? And what does he say? 
Oh, some guy, he says with a laugh. <laughs> Quote, it's a nod to the gay rumors he's been fending off ever since he's got into a verbal altercation with some taunting paparazzi earlier that year. There's nothing wrong with being gay, he says, <laughs> but I'm not. Adding to the buzz, he's dressed up in a leotard and heels and danced to single ladies to comic effect to square a sports oh, bet with some buddies. That. He got the idea from his fans. The video of his performance got over 25 million I was going to say, I, that era is so dark, yeah, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> it's really dark. So later on, it's afternoon. Joe's driving his big black Mercedes G-Class. <laughs> Tell yourself down sunset. Why are you at studio? Trader Joe's except to be seen and to yeah. have people come up to you and ask you if you're a Joe 100%. Jonas. <laughs> uh, to the studio to work on his the album. G-class. I love uh, his big black Mercedes G-Class. He's thinking about the days when he and his brothers and his dad toured the country with a trailer full of instruments, performing wherever they could. Success did not come easily, he says, and it got to the point where we were about to say, this sucks. We don't want to do this anymore. And then it all started to happen for us. And what does he say next, Matt? And happened it did. Quote, we've been every state in America besides Alaska and Hawaii, been all over Europe. It's been so much fun. Um... We did things that were really, that were like, really? We're going to do this? Let's go and play for an elementary school. Are you serious? At the time, I was like, I'm 17. I want to go meet girls at high schools. And now I'm 21. I want to go play music at a club. So, oh my God. Joe really quickly establishes himself as like alternative to the grain of the Jonas Brothers. He really is like, if no one else is going to do it, I will. (laughs) I will say, I think I relate to, I think I always related to Joe if I was to like pick who I related to in the Jonas Brothers because I'm also a middle child and I'm like, yep. Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. Hello, my good time gal. And I'm like, look at me. I'm different. I'm that weird. That really I'm is edgy. Joe. Yeah, no, literally. And that really is you. So Demi Lovato, and the same month, like right as the detail shoot drops, um, halfway through April comes out that she is leaving Sunny with a Chance. Quote, we respect Demi's decision to focus full time on her music and not immediately return to her acting career, says a rep for the Disney Channel to people, quote, she's a talented young woman and our hearts are with her as she continues to take action to improve her health and bounce back from adversity. Now, really quickly, can you please look at this Daily Mail article of photos <laughs> from Joe and Nick's uh, 20, let's see, Joe's 21, Nick's 18, like, let's just look at these photos. I... A real bonus for Jonas fans. Joe and brother Nick take off their shirts in Hawaii. Oh my god. Not the Crazy. like fourth and this is Jonas also that the... nobody knows in the background of this photo. Yeah. Also, can we just talk about how like <laughs> that they don't mention Joe, we really needed at this point, we needed Joe to stop waxing his chest like love and light. Like, yeah, that really is tragic. No more wax checks. No more wax chest. Although it's funny that like he and Joe, Nick and Joe, both legitimately look like they were made in a lab by gay scientists. You know, like like just like, like the way the that power they, look. they could have. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> in um the right at the beginning of the summer in June, Nick or sorry, not Nick, Joe launches his solo career with a new single. Because of copyright, we can't play it here. It's, his album's really bad. I was going to um, say, talk about forgotten to the history books. <laughs> yeah. I also love that I got this interview from June, also June 30th, uh, with sheknows.com. <laughs> oh, we're really going back. What does she know? What does she know? <laughs> she knows she that knows. she's done already done had her sisters. <laughs> so, um... This is from, yeah, like I said, end of June. Nick, in response to Joe's career, says, quote, it's not over for the Jonas Brothers. Oh, it's it's Jover. I was going to say, they might, it's they might say literally it's... Jover. <laughs> so, Matt, can you read this first sentence for me and try not to laugh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me, okay, let me take a sec. Jonas and Quaker Chewy have set out on a campaign to find the next hit pop star, the winner of which will get the opportunity to record a song with Jonas' brother Nick. Our celeb correspondent, Whitney English, got the details (laughs) on how the talent contest is shaping up and managed to get a little gossip on the future of the Joe Bros while she was at it. So wait, by the way, uh, those of us who were in the Quaker Chewy bar trenches (laughs) in 2011... (laughs) Wait, what's your Quaker Chewy bar? Go- what's your go-to Quaker Chewy bar? I still have the knockoff ones from Kirkland, the like <laughs> the little chocolate chip ones. Oh my god, 
Oh wait, so you're good. a chocolate chip Quaker Chewy bar. Well, that's the one I buy the knockoff ones from Kirkland. Girl, I don't know. I don't know what other what name brand ones there are. Well, no, like you know the Quaker Chewy flavors. There's like s'mores. Then there's dark chocolate. My mom would not allow that in the house ra- at the time, unfortunately. Oatmeal raisin. I was I was an oatmeal I, raisin Quaker I'd probably chewy. be a s'mores, s'mores girl, to be honest. No be reason, a s'mores girl. Not. Wait, what are all these flavors? We also have... Yeah, so there's chocolate chip, peanut butter, and s'mores, and Ooh, peanut oatmeal butter. raisin. Mm-hmm. And my mom's like, the oatmeal raisin is healthy. <laughs> yeah. Always, always, always the oatmeal. always, <laughs> always, always got to get those calories from our Quaker Chewy bars. Um, so, quote, I'm looking for a person with a real voice and the person with the overall package that takes to be a superstar today. Sure, Joe. <laughs> quote, and he later says, it's not over for the Jonas Brothers as a group. We have a lot of exciting opportunities as individuals. Joe <laughs> But our focus as a group is still there and we'll come back eventually and do another record and a tour, I'm sure. Yeah, in 10 years. <laughs> so... Read this headline for me from The Gothamist. Mm-hmm. Joe Jonas got nerf balled by, quote, hostile Williamsburg. This is from 7 Eleven. Now, I'm only mentioning this because shout out Paper Magazine, my job. Hi, everybody. Thank you for reading me on Paper Magazine. You can go <laughs> read my fashion report from BavoCon, as well as my opinions on the Mean Girls and also plug, plug, plug. like Britney Spears, Mariah Carey, yada, yada, yada. Cher was our most recent cover star. We've also got shoots with Baby Storm, Hannah Diamond, and the works. Hi, Paper. Okay, so Paper Magazine back in 2011 hosted a concert featuring Swiss Beats and Joe Jonas at the House of Vans in Williamsburg, which is just like, I can't even. Not the House of Vans. Yeah, uh, it was sponsored by Corona, Ben and & Jerry's, and Nerf Basketballs. You have um, to love. I love that. News reports from what they deem, quote, brooklyn's hipster capital like oh we're well, in the trenches we are in the fucking this trenches was height of the now. word hipster too like yeah oof. say that uh joe had booing jeering and stony <laughs> silence from the hipsters when he tried to perform <laughs> his new music obviously a rep for paper alex swerdloff said this was not true uh obviously it is paper's party they probably were not inclined to be like Yes, Joe Jonas got <laughs> laughed off stage and pelted with Nerf balls at our <laughs> performance. Um, but obviously, conflicting reports all around. So uh, in July, also, like just days after that story drops, um, Nick gives a interview at a panel, the uh, Warner Bros. There's like it's like some kind of Grammy mentorship panel for the some industry, like industry, blah, blah, thing. blah. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a thing that's like a thing for things about things, you know. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. It's a having conversations <laughs> industrial complex event. So absolutely. Um, Joe, sorry, Joe, Nick, um, is joined by 13 year old recording artist Grayson Chance for a quote Who? master panel with high school students from across the country. Um, they answer a bunch of questions during this panel. Warner Bros. record exec Mike Elizondo is also there. Um, when asked about Joe's solo endeavor, listen to what he says. Listen to what he says. Listen to what he says. Mm. It's Jover. It's interesting because the project that I did was more of a side project and he's really doing a solo thing. So when I did mine, it really provided for me to be able to go do that for a little while come back with the brothers and have it be a natural kind of progression but he is really kind of doing a solo thing (laughs) oh oh they absolutely are fighting behind the scenes like they have been in our (laughs) he's really enjoying it and his songs are great (laughs) oh i love it i can feel it i can feel it you know when i did my solo project it was like (laughs) i'm i'm I did a side project. It was just a little thing. It was just a little thing. We called it a side project. It was like a way for me to grow. And like, I thought that I was doing it so that the Jones I was doing it so I can better. Back to the group. Yeah. But he's doing like a solo thing. Like he's actually solo now. So it's actually not what I did. He's doing something else. Like, But he also ooh, can't actually say I've, anything I've negative about it whatsoever. Like this. I've been in fights like this with my siblings because I have two. So, you know. <laughs> this is i just i could tell right away i was like oh i know exactly i'm kind of obsessed like i really wish they'd fight more in public (laughs) oh they do they start 
Don't worry. Ooh. We're getting there. She's starting. So I love this because this next headline is the ultimate life comes at you fast of this entire episode. So please hold it in your hearts. Matt, read that for me. Joe Jonas joining Britney Spears on European tour. Wow. So this is from August 4th, 2011. How much, how much time passes? Truly? Joe tells people, quote, it's a dream come true. She was the first girl I ever had of a poster on my wall, and her album was the first CD I ever bought. It's so funny to think I had that on my wall, and here I am about to perform for her. Please hold that in your heart. Like, literally, guys, take that into your heart. Bring your love with it. Take it with you. Carry it with you for the rest of this episode, okay? Joe Jonas is going to open the Femme Fatale t- European <laughs> tour, okay? Like, just carry that in your it's heart crazy. for now with you, okay? I promise with you that it is a journey you must take this information on. To Otherwise, quite, to quite do not literally quote Demi directly, get a job, stay away from her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> must be said. So, there is this L story that comes out that same month that Joe announces the European leg of the Femme Fatale tour called Into the Fire. It's an L. It's with Demi. Oh boy, so this is uh, uh. So this is the last time we're going to be checking in on Demi this episode and maybe for the series as well. Um but I do think that this kind of wraps up her arc with the Jonas Brothers and it really like fleshes out what's happening behind the scenes, right? And this is the thing that I find very interesting about them besides so many other things that like, you know, they really did not do a good job of maintaining the image that they were like these chaste virginal boy banders for very long. Um, And it's something that we see with like Justin as well, that like Justin also really echoes this kind of pattern of like, you know, presenting like a united front and then really quickly unraveling behind the scenes and the management around Justin really like starting to fail to like, contain the chaos yeah. right keep control of the narrative so this is with demi and when news of demi's backstage theatrics on tour with the jonas brothers got out the blogosphere dubbed her demi drama during a flight to peru like we said she punches then friend alex welch in the face quote i just felt like she'd betrayed me that's the bottom line speaking of alex allegedly telling um the jonas brothers dad about the drugs and partying that she had gotten up to the night before they got on the plane. Quote, when you punch someone on a plane, enough is enough. Right after I texted my mom and I just said, I'm sorry. They then had broken up, Justin, I mean, sorry, Joe and Demi. And rumors persisted that the breakup and Ashley Green, the Twilight star that just that Joe was dating, were sort of at the conflict, like the center of this conflict on the mm. plane. Um, and she admits in this article that that was one of the factors and that her and Joe had had no contact since the fight, which at that point, it had almost been nine months that they had not spoken. Um Quote, I wouldn't credit my cre- I wouldn't credit my meltdown to a guy. There was so much other stuff in my life. And then it kind of gets into um you know, a lot of different details about Demi's history with bulimia, bullying, and self-harm. And this incident that I find really interesting where um, one of the Disney Channel PR people that had, like, been hired through Demi's early career, these photos on the red carpet had come out of Miley Cyrus's Sweet 16 in 2008. And in the photos you could see cutting scars on Demi's wrist. And before even like reaching out to Demi to like ask for a statement or like figure it out with Demi, the PR manager like literally just like went ahead and issued a statement like, oh, those aren't scars. Those are like indentations from like a gummy bracelet that Demi was wearing. And Demi was like, that person's not with me anymore. But like really quickly, like Demi establishes that she has like a contentious relationship with the Disney machine. Obviously, she's out of De- Sunny with a chance. And that's really where we're going to leave Demi for now. So Nick gets cast in How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying on Broadway in September. And that same week, we get this incredible exo jane cat marnell expose of joe jonas smoking weed in (laughs) soho 
Quote, Amazing. according to Kat Marnell over at XO Jane, quote, a few weeks ago, Joe Jonas showed up to Gold Bar. Oh, my God. Shout out Gold Bar. <laughs> and totally smoked the safest drug in the world in the DJ booth. Take it away, Kat's friend, Sean. Quote, so we started to smoke and Joe smelled it and reached over and asked the DJ if we could smoke. The DJ told him it wasn't his pot, then pointed us out to Joe. Joe tapped me on the shoulder and asked if he could smoke. It was him and his boys. There were girls there, too, but it was like four or five dudes. Anyway, Joe came in the booth and we passed on the joint. He was really nice and said thank you and everything. Later that night, Joe came back into the DJ's booth and smoked his own joint. It was much bigger than ours had been. He looked very stoned, dancing around. They didn't play any Jonas Brothers. He danced to Justin Timberlake's Like I Love You. To put to bed any conspiracy theorists who believe the account is a PR scam, Marnell assured us via email that Jonas, quote, definitely inhaled. He was burning it down. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he got down with the marijuana yeah. and we're gonna learn in this next piece too that like this is really an era where joe is kind of like unraveling the disney channel image with attempts to seem edgier and like a bad boy and like like he has some sort of grit to him right he's like, like attending more like adult he lives in and... hollywood and mm-hmm. he like you know, drives a Benz and like has like a scruffy beard and like has like art and smokes weed and wants to like, you know, make music like Tiesto God, and Dead Mouse. It's so easy to like market of like a man in general. Yeah. <laughs> Some do like five things and they're like, he's an adult and we should take him seriously. So Joe Jonas comes of age. This is a story from September 28th in the New York Times. Why don't you read this for us, Matt? Um, Sure. Fast Life, Years in Production, is, Mr. Jonas acknowledged, a coming-of-age album. In lieu of the lightweight pop that made the Jonas Brothers multimillionaires, they earned about $35 million annually in the last few years, the songs have a slicker, darker feel. Mr. Jonas said he approached his brothers with the idea of doing a solo record in 2009. Quote, I wouldn't have done it if they weren't supportive, he said. The album presents the formerly virginal Jonas brother, now purity ring free, as a party hopping authority. Mr. Jonas said his dream would be to uh, for club DJs to remix his tracks. Still, Mr. Jonas said he was worried whether Fast Life would find an audience. In 2010, his younger brother Nick, now 19, released a so- solo album, Who I Am, which sold fewer than 200,000 copies in the United States, a pittance compared to the brother's multi-platinum sales. But Ken Bunt, executive vice president for Disney Music Group, which runs Hollywood Records, the Jonas' label, defended Nick's solo work, noting that he had a sold-out tour with it. By contrast, Joe's album is getting a pretty large campaign, Mr. Bunt said, including a tour with Jay Sean and opening for Britney Spears in Europe. He says, quote, it's a global rollout, so we have high expectations. We're very bullish on the album. We think we've got quite a future with Joe as a solo artist and as a Jonas brother. Uh, I love that they're like, yeah, you know, um, Nick Jonas's uh, album was like kind of a side project. Uh, you know, it didn't sell that much. It's kind of a flop. Nick Jonas flop. Nick Jonas and the administration flop. <laughs> Joe Jonas, though, he's getting a big campaign. It's already going sold all out. In. It's done. We've got done. quite a future. It's a solo artist time. He's a Joe. We're, we're going to go all in. He's not going to flop. Reader. <laughs> He flops. <laughs> I can't wait to get to the sales. Well, we don't have the sales here, but I will say I can that look it up real quick. I'm looking at it right now. Universally gets like a uh, sixty out of a hundred for critical <laughs> reception. So well. Um, in 2010, this is from Wiki. Nick Jonas launched his side project, Nick Jonas <gasps> Administration. The album was seen as a commercial su- failure, which is under 200,000 copies in the no, US. Joe, Fast Life sold a total of 18,000 copies in its first week. <laughs> I was getting there. I was getting there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you a keep total going. Total of 45,000 copies in by the, the US. By 2015. Oh. My God! So it flopped I like love it. I it love flopped so like Nick. quadruple hard. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's actually like that's concerning. I think like we as a podcast like get more downloads. <laughs> more people have listened to the Jonas Brothers series than streamed Joe Jonas's album Fast Life. That's actually true. 
<laughs> That's actually so funny. Okay, so keep going. Wow, 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 wow. So I just love that. Again, but it's telling you that they do not know what to do with the Jonas Brothers. That like no. the Jonas Brothers as individuals do not have the star power or as <laughs> Virgil of Big Soy Naturals might say, the swag power of <laughs> Justin Bieber. They just don't. Listen, I mean... That's listen. actually like an objective truth at this point. No, like listen, <laughs> like they really Justin don't have Bieber the swag power. Was literally building an economy, okay? Like a swag economy, you might say. <laughs> I do feel like this series, now that we're like child star experts already at this point, I really do feel no, like I don't t- don't call us that. That sounds so creepy. <laughs> child star experts. <laughs> Okay, keep it. Let's go. Okay, wait. What were you gonna say? I'm as kind of as uh, as um, I don't know. Uh, field reporters, maybe you could say. Um, I do feel like talent has really shown to be like actually real and true, and like an actual yeah. moniker of success. Like seeing yeah. Ariana and Justin Bieber compared to like all of their predecessors, talent really does actually. Help this I've been listening. Like to... you can't market mediocrity. I've literally been listening to Sweetener nonstop. <laughs> Every Still, time it's been months. Back to you, back to you, back to you. God, that song like destroys me. Okay. So there's also an interview with Joe for the fast life of Joe Jonas in Coup de Man. Unclear what this outlet is. <laughs> I but was let's gonna say like really who? quickly read. So it did sounds like so Coup de Man says, it sounds like you did quite a lot of research when writing the album, checking out DJs in LA and Miami. Was that important to you, Joe? Quote, Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to listen to some of the stuff DJs were doing. And between recording, me and my friends would hang out and go out and listen to some of the DJs. Now, who do you think his um, inspos were? Guys, let's just give it a second here. It's 2011. He's going (laughs) to clubs in Miami and LA. Just think about like the DJs. He's like, let's go. Pump, 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 jump, jump, fisting, fisting, fisting. I hate this. Tiesto. Which love Tiesto. Let's not don't yeah. not too much on not too much on Tiesto, y'all. Uh Swedish House Mafia and Dead Mouse. <laughs> this is just like okay, but like history repeats itself. This is just like when they're like, Oh, what inspires Joe's Bros? And they're like, Elvis, Johnny Cash. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> How okay. About somebody that's not in the top like five <laughs> when now, you Google search rock music. You're gonna answer for Joe's next question, okay? Okay. True or false, you'll be opening on Britney Spears' next tour. <laughs> false, unfortunately. It would have been real cool, but it didn't work out this time. But hopefully we'll try to figure something out. What the fuck happened? He gets silently dropped from the Britney I mean, tour. I don't remember it happening at all, so I was confused when I read it the first time. But Yeah. I... So <laughs> Nick gets interviewed by Teen Vogue in November of 2011 and is asked, quote, what's next for your music career? And says, quote, I've been doing a lot of writing this past year for other artists and some for myself. For the most part, my mentality is that a great song is a great song, whether or not it's something you hold on to for a little while or until the time is right to release it with my brothers or myself. I'm definitely looking forward to the next Jonas Brothers project, <coughs> and I believe that will come before anything I would do on my own. Okay. He releases two albums until <laughs> before the next Jonas Brothers album comes out. <laughs> like nine years later. <laughs> We've actually talked about it recently for the first time, and I'm really excited for the next chapter of us musically. It's obviously important that we continue to follow our goals and ambitions as individual, but when the time is right, we'll start up and we're excited for that. Now, Kevin also laugh. at his 21st birthday party in Las Vegas. Really? Where that is same Kevin? Month, Where has Kevin been this whole time? Girl, he's fucking... He's fucking his Italian wife down Honestly, in New like, Jersey. He's in, he's in New Jersey with some dogs and a wife, and they're fucking down every night, okay? <laughs> he's like, y'all Miss, should settle down. Miss, it's not too bad, actually. Miss Danielle Delisa Jonas is just getting dicked by Kevin constantly. <laughs> <laughs> because he's trying to find the worth in it remember like mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. says not worth the wait and she's like you know what let's turn this ship around right like let's <laughs> let's turn that frown upside down right we can work i can work with this yes exactly. i can work with your christianity evangelical induced mm-hmm, by mm-hmm. Amber prescription okay like we can really like make something happen here we can make some <laughs> magic happen okay i love it honestly uh, in my mind, in my mind, 
Kevin and Danielle Jonas have the sort of like electric Italian American chemistry of Joe and Melissa Gorga. Like that's like in my <laughs> mind who these people are. Okay. So it's starting to make more sense. It's starting to make sense. Kevin Jonas says at his birthday party, quote, my brothers are performing Broadway. Nick is doing the Broadway musical, How to Succeed with Business Without Really Trying. Joe's all over. My wife and I just moved back to New Jersey, which is, of course, on the East Coast, which means we'll all be together. (laughs) Though he wouldn't commit to another Jonas Brothers project, he says. He says, quote, at his party, I think the tides are perfectly lining up for the future of the Jonas Brothers again. He's like, I, love, and I light. love that for like two years. They're just like, yeah, it'll happen. Yeah, stars, stars are lining. You know, we're in the studio. We're making things happen. Because remember last episode, they were in the studio. <laughs> we didn't. Where's that music? So, Matt, you're going to be Nick Jonas. Oh and God. I'm going to be the interviewer. Okay. okay? So, Nick starts the, uh, the year off with a bang. <laughs> I'm just reading some of this already and I'm screaming. <laughs> Nick gets interviewed by The Advocate. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is something that'll really come back with a vengeance next week when we have our finale. Not vengeance. Uh, Nick's relationship to the gay media, right? So this is starting to lay the groundwork for that. This is the A-list interview, Nick Jonas. So this is halfway through January 2012. The Advocate writes, and now this is one of the craziest pieces of media i think i've ever read okay i'm gonna try to keep it together guys if you're driving just know that if we cause a crash because of like screaming and hysterics induced by this next segment i'm not responsible for that and i'm not paying your bills knock on wood knock on wood got it in his first gay press interview, <laughs> How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, Nick Jonas shares his blessings with stylish LGBT fans. Also, this is pre I, this is pre the Q. This is, is pre queer. Oh yeah, I forgot they have like pre queer you know. plus. <laughs> they hadn't yet installed the queer plus firmware update. In this the is just LGBT a BLT acronym. sandwich, honey. Like- yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Excuse me. Girls go wild for the Jonas Brothers. But are you also aware of your gay male following? (laughs) I don't have to read this. (laughs) Yes, we love our gay fans. It was definitely cool when we realized that. Because the more you can grow your audience, the more people you can impact. They've been incredible over the years. My brothers and I look forward to meeting them because they really respond to our style. And it's so cool to see how our influence has impacted what they're wearing. (laughs) Also give <laughs> They also give really good gifts that are meet and greets, hats, scarves, and other things. They always have good t- Do any gay people help you look so dapper? Definitely. We work with a lot of gay people as a part of our team, and they're amazing. We're blessed to have them. Are there gays in your circle of friends? <laughs> the questions and the responses are so funny obviously doing musical theater i've had a lot of gay friends over the years le miserable in london in 2010 was my first re-entry back into theater and my gay castmates in particular were really helpful to me during that transition i've kept in touch with all of them and it's great when i can go back and see them get some food together talk and have a good laugh perez hilton is also a good gay Um, friend to have (laughs) Keep going, keep going. (laughs) Yes, Perez is an amazing guy. He's been a big supporter of my brothers and me, and he's been an amazing support as I've transitioned back into theater. I love that he came out to see Hairspray at the Hollywood Bowl, and I know he's going to come see How to Succeed. I'm blessed to have him as a friend as well. Did you make gay friends during your Broadway (laughs) debut at the age of eight in Annie Get Your Gun? I'm sorry, what kind of question is that? When you were eight say years it. old. Did you make any say gays? It. Say it. Say it. <laughs> say it. Yeah. Say my, it. Yeah. My first exposure to Broadway was probably a first exposure to gay people. <laughs> it was great. It was exciting to be around like minded people who were also passionate about music and performing like minded. Did anyone explain to you that some boys like boys and some girls like girls? <gasps> this is like getting increasingly crazy. <laughs> 
<laughs> it gets I worse. Don't, I don't think that conversation needed to be had. I was totally aware. I understood what it meant and I was totally fine with it. It didn't confuse me because I knew it was all about love. I was raised in a really open home where the policy was love. Yet it was an evangelical Christian oh. home and your father was a preacher. My upbringing was faith-based, but we believed you should love all others as you want to be loved because everyone should be treated equally. That helped me have an understanding of people on different journeys and in different walks of life. Yeah, different At the journeys day, of being out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh. the, let me finish. Oh. <laughs> At the end of the at the end of the day, we're all the same because we all want to be loved. As long as love is the key, we're in good shape. <laughs> when a number of LGBT blogs posted <laughs> pictures of you hugging anti-gay saddleback church pastor Rick Warren in 2010, some readers wondered if you might share his belief on issues like gay marriage. Wow, really coming from. My friends are my friends, and people that I'm acquainted with don't necessarily shame, share the same opinions as I do, and that's how I'll put that. My thoughts on gay marriage are that everyone has the right to love and be loved, and that's the position I take. Wait, what does it even mean? <laughs> my thoughts on gay marriage are that everyone has the right to love and be loved. By the way, just for those of you who don't know, Rick Warren, for those of you who just like literally just don't understand this, wrote The Purpose Driven Life. Which is like oh no, blow that your sounds bad. Out. Um, keep going. I'm so okay. sorry. Oh no, no. Well, it's it's your question now. Your your turn. A wholesome conservative image has somewhat defined the Jonas Brothers. At the height of the group's popularity, the media focused a lot on your purity rings. For example, as the three of you get older and branch out into other individual interests, like fucking, would you want to distance yourself from that image? I don't think we separate ourselves from that, but my brothers and I have come into our own as men in the past few years, and that's been a major part in who we are and how we've carried ourselves. It's important for us to remember that we have values and morals, but each of us have taken the responsibility that we have as a man to be exactly who we're supposed to be, whatever that means for us as individuals. We still have a good image. However, we've each made choices that have defined who we are as people. I'm comfortable with who I am as a man now, and I'm blessed to be in the position I am in life. I gotta say, Nick is, like, the best at, like, like go girl, give us nothing. <laughs> like yeah, and also... Like, that whole uh, response, like, did not answer the question whatsoever. For those of you who don't remember, also, Obama let Warren give the invocation at the inauguration ceremony, which angered the LGBT advocates yes. that Obama had been campaigning oh God, for the yes. votes for. Oh, for those of you who don't remember, for those of you who don't remember... Gulp. Um, gulp. That's a that was gulp. a wild interview. <laughs> gulp. <laughs> oh, the sirens are coming for me because I made that out joke. <laughs> okay, Nick Jonas plans to return to the Jonas Brothers. This is in February, right after that other one. Quote: Jonas is scheduled to appear in How to Succeed with Business without really trying for six months. After that, he has plans to go back into the studio and record with his brothers. Quote: It's been about a year and a half, two years since we released music together. It'll be great to do that once again for our fans. <laughs> they then are like just teasing everyone along. <laughs> this next piece. Why don't you read that for me, Matt? Bad Luck Jonas from New York Post. Whew. Okay, so this is later in February 2012. Nick Jonas is having a bad month. Audiences for Broadway's revival of How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying have dropped almost 40% since the Jonas brother, Heartthrob, took over the lead role of um, from stop, the stop, alum. Stop, stop, stop. Wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop, stop. Who do you all think Nick took the role from? Okay, so just to set up our power scale, our eating for free power scale, we have Ariana Grande, top. We have Justin Bieber, kind of like edging right there with her. We have, let's say, Selena Gomez underneath, right? Mm -hmm. We have Demi Lovato. Mm -hmm. We have... Nick Jonas, and then we have Joe, and then way down here we have Kevin, right? <laughs> but we have a new contender for the spot between Demi and Nick. And who do you all think that person is who would drive 
40% more ticket sales than Nick Jonas in 2012. Drum roll, please. Uh, Matt, tell them who it is. Glee alum, Darren Chris. Ah! <laughs> I'm so so Darren gay, Chris gay is screaming. officially 40% more popular than Nick Jonas. That's some uh, real flop energy to go from Darren Chris to Nick Jonas. Okay, keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, uh, okay, so, okay, it's a bad month. And apparently, yesterday, day before this article on February 22nd, um, his girlfriend of 10 months, 27-year-old, oh my god, 27, Australian yeah, stunner, jail. Delta Goodrem, dropped him, according to our It's Oh my god, right after Valentine's Day. Perhaps Nick, 19, can turn things around with a guest appearance on NBC's heavily hyped musical Smash next week. <laughs> Not smash <laughs> the hips keep coming every sentence it's of like this they New can't stop story is like a the anti-slate energy <laughs> we have darren chris edging you out in ticket sales we have a 27 year old australian model named delta goodrum <laughs> then we That's have dragon, nbc's the flop musical smash literally Wait, oh what's Delta God. Goodrum up to these days? That not Delta like, Goodrum. Welcome com. to the stage. DeltaGoodrum.com. They must be like 37 now. Okay, so Delta. Let's see. About. Why would a 27 year old go to old That's just is an artist weird. in the truest sense, bringing stories to life as a singer, songwriter, traversing stage and screen as an actress and performer, and by making giving back a focus in her life through philanthropy. Delta has achieved multi-platinum selling status, nine number one singles, five number one albums, 17 top oh. 10 hits, oh. 12 <laughs> Aria awards, a silver Logie, and three world music awards. Now, okay. okay Is she okay, like okay. the a, a icon of the world? We just have no idea. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, but you don't get to say you have a number one album if your album is number one on the Australian dance chart. Love oh, and light to you. That's like you three don't... sub genres. Like that's that's a little too Okay, wait. Delta Goodrum. It's like how we're the number one podcast in like activism subcategory <laughs> in like Paraguay. <laughs> Delta. Delta. Let's see Goodrum. here. I'm on their Instagram that has 691,000 I love that followers. you are, okay, wait, promotion release. I'm looking at their album, Delta. Chart performance. Okay. Debuted at number one on the Australia Aria Albums chart with 23,000 copies sold. I'm sorry. What? If you're selling 23,000 copies, you're not, that's not a number one album in 2007. Like, love and light. That's not to like, not to like, I mean, I guess they're matching Australia. Like, yeah, in Australia, it's three times platinum, but... Wait, three times platinum at 23,000 sales? Well, total sales is 210,000. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. But, like, it's, like, immediate sales. That is very interesting. That was, like, its first week. Yeah, I mean... Well, what could have been? In New Zealand, it sold 7,000. Well, it's not like in Nick the United help. States. Nick it's needed help finding a you know, more clout focused. Yeah. I need partner. to love and light. Like, what does Delta Goodrum sound like? The way we've, the we way I would cons- No, I know we can't, but I'm gonna hear it for myself. Um, the way that like we consider ourselves like pretty in the know and have like legitimately never heard this person's music. Not once. That's in why our I'm life. like screaming that they're like this major, major artist. I'm like. Mm. Okay, this sucks ass. I'm not going to do that. That so, sounded horrible. <laughs> yeah. Um, in May, or sorry, not May, in April 30th, 2012, uh, Kevin Jonas and wife Danielle uh, announced that they have an e-reality show, Married to Jonas, which is about as flop energy as you can get. <laughs> an e-reality show in 2012, babe, you're a flop. Like, you're never coming back to anything. It's like, like that, you're that's done. Jover. Like... It's Jover. So... 
Quote, Danielle is living a true Cinderella story after marrying into pop royalty, partnering in Kevin's larger-than-life career, and becoming a Jonas, a name synonymous with hit music and a worldwide fan base. Mm. The series presents a unique look at a young couple and their families from two entirely different worlds, one small town and one dealing with international fame, coming together as one and starting a whole new life together. Now, did you ever... You know what's funny? If you Google "married to Kevin" TV show, the King of Queens married comes to up Jonas. First. Okay, so we're actually going to play this trailer here, and let's right. see what we've got. I'm scared. I'm scared. This August, whether you're a Jonas brother yeah, or a regular girl from Jersey, you have more shoes than me. When you get married, you get in-laws. Hello, hello, hello. I put a gate in, but it doesn't seem to be working. Oh, did you just hit him? Yeah, hit me in the head with a pole. <laughs> oh, Dina's gonna have a party here. Let me dig a big muddy hole. This happened to be someone's birthday. How about the butt left in a box? Thanks, show her love. I hate all of you. Married to Jonas, coming this August on E. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Psychic damage. Immediate psychic damage. Okay, wait. I wanna I wanna see this clip. Uh wait, married to Jonas. Let's just see what like the clips are. Okay, let's look at Kevin feels the pressure on married to Jonas. <laughs> After a long day of recording, Kevin Hello. wants to vent to Danny, but Danny doesn't want to talk. <laughs> She looks exactly like you think she would. How you doing? Okay, tired. You're tired. It has been a long day. Why? Well, what's the matter with you? Uh, it's just long. I don't know. This is tough. Nick wanted me to sing part of the bridge today. I get in there and I'm singing. I don't know if I'm doing a good job. I'm sure everything is fine, honestly. I'm so tired right now from this whole day. There's just a lot of decisions that didn't get made today, and it's all on me, and I'm just tired. It's frustrating because I want to do a good job because honestly, I don't but get I don't get to you, sing that all. They would have told you if you didn't do a good job. You know I know that. that. I, I can't. I don't sing like Joe and Nick. I don't. But you still sound good, so just. Can but I, I do. Talk you, do about you really? This later? Are, are you just kidding? A little bit later. Danny, why? Because I'm I'm very tired and I don't want to like I re- I think that we need to talk about it if you want to talk about it. But right now, Dan, I've been waiting all home. day for you to get home. Like I was just I was I, here for I like an hour. I understand that, but can't but you no, just listen. Wait a so bit? here's we'll the problem. Go. I don't care. Kevin, what? Can we just talk about it later so that I can actually talk to you and have the right? You don't mindset. have to say anything. Just listen to what I'm saying. I just want you to listen. I understand that you're frustrated and everything, but we could talk about it in a few minutes. But if I don't talk about Let it Let me now, go upstairs and put coffee clothes Danny, on. What, what's the point? I'm just gonna go upstairs then. Danielle, stop. Danny. Yeah, I just said two seconds. <laughs> I'm never having a problem. I'm never having an issue. And whenever I do, you always wanna listen to me. What is different about now? Danny, why are you doing this? Oh my God. Danielle, is this really going to solve anything? My sanity. <laughs> Whatever, Danielle. Boom. I'm actually kind of obsessed. <laughs> Do we need to watch this? I kind of think we need to watch this. Uh, let me let me see if I can download that. Because <laughs> I'm God, I, so... I doubt you can stream that show now. <laughs> Kevin Jonas is a party pooper. <laughs> I love all these Kevin Jonas versus Danny's intrusive father. Are these just like clips on YouTube that they still have up? Yeah. The marriage question. Kevin Jonas's in-laws move in. Oh my God. It's really bleak when this is what you have yeah, as a priority with life. your wife. Okay. But also, can we just talk about how like he seems like literally a five-year-old? Oh, I this mean, is something where like he seems like Arrested Development, but also sh- former evangelical girls weigh in. I feel like the men in our lives that are evangelical, like this is what they're all like. It's like this form oh, yeah. of like weird childishness, extremely where it's like, impatient. 
extremely impatient, very like demanding, controlling, and like like really like po- like pout party poopy is the only way I can explain it. Like, also, do you love how he's so jobless because he's like. I've been waiting here right. all day for That's you to get home. some broke energy right there. Like, like, okay, so you don't have a job. Also, the way she was I, like, we, can you we literally really sleep a minute day, for like, me to get my clothes on? They wanted me to like sing a song and like, I don't sing like them. Like, what if I don't sing like them? Like, it's really bad. And she's like, Kevin, I literally just walked in the door. I literally just walked in the door. Can you give me like five seconds? He's like, why do you hate me? Do you want me to die? I'll fucking kill myself right now. When he said like, I what's I complain to you all the time. Why is now different? I was like, <laughs> oh, really, really cool. gonna admit that right now? That's <laughs> so, depressing. Uh, the Hollywood Reporter. We're wrapping up here really shortly. Good but, to know that's um, what Kevin's been up to, by the way. Yeah, this is Kevin's life, right? <laughs> Kevin is in hetero hell in New Jersey. So, um, the very first thing in May, it comes out that the Jonas Brothers have parted ways with Hollywood Records. It's officially, <gasps> it's officially Jover. Um, so they had sold together 17 million albums worldwide. Isn't that okay? devastating that you sell 17 million albums together as a band and then joe's album sells like what thirty thousand copies yes. <laughs> so within like a year after top of yeah. like zero retention <laughs> zero so quote this is a decision we made as a group says nick quote Naturally, as with any partnership, when you do part ways, there is emotion tied to it. We've been blessed to have a lot of success with Hollywood and Disney, but speaking on behalf of my brothers and our team, we're all looking forward to this next chapter. We're ready for that to step up as a group, and being able to take our work with us was so important. Uh, spokesperson for Hollywood Records says, quote, Hollywood Records and the Joe Bros have amicably ended as amazingly successful partnership after six years. We couldn't have asked for better partners or nicer people to work with. We wish Nick, Kevin, and Joe all the best in their future endeavors. It's interesting that they were allowed to get bought out by Hollywood Records because Hollywood's like, y'all are dead in the water. We aren't spending <laughs> any money on you guys. Right. Quote, Industry and distribution channels are changing so rapidly. We don't even know what it means anymore to put out a record, says their manager, Right. Even if we wanted to take another deal with a major, it would be a different than what we entered into when we signed with Hollywood. We don't have to become just an artist to the label. We could be a partner or do it ourselves and then come back later on. There's no plan here. The plan is whatever we decide to make it. He's basically saying like, we have no idea what we're going to do now. We have parted ways and like there is literally not a plan in place to get another Jonas Brothers album out. Yeah, because they're like, we're going to be in the studio. Like, don't worry, we're going to be back in the studio. Like, we're already writing the songs. It's already on the way. And then Disney's like, who? Who? (laughs) They're like, we changed the locks. Don't come in. uh, Their manager then also says that they had outgrown Disney, quote, and having conversations about moving forward. We knew we weren't going to do a Jonas show on Disney Channel. And the likelihood of us doing movies in that vein was not there. So the big platforms were not really accessible to us anymore. He's like, yeah, the way that we got these boys famous and the things that we were doing to keep them famous just like don't really work because their TV show was a flop. So um, we're kind of just like now trying to figure out how to make money. Quote, Uh, Nick says, in these past three years, my brothers and I have not released a record, but we've really come into our own as men, and we've also lived life, which is an important part of making a record. I've got a studio set up in my apartment in New York where we can all just put down our ideas. It's a really liberating feeling to just be able to create and write whatever is on our hearts. They said to expect a new Joe Bros album by the end of 2012 or early 2013. (laughs) I feel like they, one, not only barely have time or make the time to actually meet in person, and then when they do, it's so, like, the flop energy is so high that they can't even, like, finish once. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, amid all of this, Kevin is, like, bone deep in PR for Married to Jonas. I mean, that's all um, he has. To the PR.com, PR.com, guys, literally <laughs> PR.com. Like, that's real <laughs> yes it's still around what 
Um, so PR.com gives an interview oh. to Kevin and Joe because they can't get a big magazine to cover this fucking reality Absol- show flopazoid. Absolutely not. So PR.com asks, Spill, Kevin, what TV shows do you watch and how about you, Danny? Oh, boy. This is when I knew. This is when I knew. This is when I knew exactly the kind of man Joe Jonas, I'm sorry, that Kevin Jonas was. Danielle says, I watch a l- lot of Say Yes to the Dress. Kevin says, a lot is an understatement. And then he says, I like Suits and Duck Dynasty. I'm sorry, that actually like took the breath off. <laughs> really like... Guys, we, they, okay, you're like, Joe is doing drugs and smoking weed in New York. He's at the club. Nick is, Nick is getting talked to by gay people. And Kevin is in hetero hell in the grip of Say Yes to the Dress and Duck Dynasty reruns. Like, really, they are. The New Jersey really jumped out. Yeah. So Joe then gives an interview again to um, Just Jared Jr about the Jonas Brothers break, quote, we needed to take it. Quote, we wanted to be able to take two and a half years to kind of do our own thing. We needed to take a break to live our lives and have something to sing about. We worked so much, we couldn't sing a song about working so much. You have to be able to go live life and create and take that time for yourself as an artist. For me and my brothers, we were able to have so many different experiences. Kevin got married. Nick was doing Broadway and learning about gay people. And I did a solo project. We got back together and we're ready to create. We have so much going on in the studio. We probably have 20 songs now that we have written. Liar. So we're dissecting and creating. I am exciting for the fans to hear the new material. That's the nice thing about my show. And Kevin's on the show and hopefully Nick on American Idol is that we all have these different outlets that we can bring in with new fans. So I have to laugh. 20 songs. 20 songs. So what's it like to be married to a Jonas brother? Kevin and his wife, Danielle, fill us in. Plus deets about their new reality show. It's crazy that this is actually like the most successful ventures. (laughs) Yeah. So quote, Matt, Mm -hmm. you're going to answer for Kevin. Well, we know that we met, that you both met on vacation, but how did you start dating after the trip was over? Kevin says, this is, by the way, sorry, this is August 17th, 2012. Sorry, you go first now. Kevin says, you know how you're supposed to meet somebody and call like two or three days later? Well, I cyber stalked her after we met and cyber stalked to see what flight she was. Okay, sorry. I'm taking it back because I'm reading this. Well, I cyber stalked her after we met and cyber stalked to see what flight she was going to be coming home. And then I called her the minute she landed that might have been a little overboard but i just went for it what the how did you find out her flight danny says you asked what day and then you found out kevin Kevin says says, there was only one flight on that airline going at that time i think it was a little much but hey it worked out in my favor right fucking weirdo sorry i I cyber stalked to see you so the daily item also does a story on Okay, just I can't I can't even prepare you for what this interview is about. The rest of this is going to be about Married to Jonas, by the way. This episode, we're ending on Married to Jonas. He's with the band, sort of. So this is from the end of How August. Ominous. Brian Gonsar, who played on Selins Grove's High's basketball, soccer, and tennis teams, married Dina DeLisa, sister of Danielle DeLisa, who married Kevin Jonas. So now we're talking okay. about the brother-in-law of Kevin. Oh. Oh my God. Gonsar says he will make sporadic appearances on the 10 episode show Married to Jonas. Quote, my wife and I will both be involved in the show because we are part of the family and are very close with Kevin and Danielle. My wife will appear much more than I will because they like to show the relationship between sisters. I travel a lot with work and I'm not around as much, but you will see me pop up in a few episodes. After graduating from Selins Grove High, Gonser attended Farley Dickinson University in New Jersey, where he majored in electronic film and video. Gonser, 30, is vice president and executive producer at a New York City advertising agency where he creates television commercials such as those from Bank of America, General (laughs) Electric, and Mountain Dew. So he's busy with a real job. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, he's got a real job. Considered to meet with this flop, Kevin Jones. (laughs) 
By the way, the photo they use in this article for Daily <laughs> Item is haunting. <laughs> this is giving like last scene before disappearance. It's literally true crime. It's literally true it's crime. The, they were all so happy that day. Also, do you think Danielle and her sister beef over the way Danielle looks? <laughs> what? What? That's very much a sibling thing to say. I'm just saying. I mean, I agree. As, a, as a sister of having sister experience. Um, so we're gonna end with Mary to Jonas getting renewed for season two. Good this God. is the most shocking part of the whole Make episode. Stop. <laughs> Why don't you read this? Okay. Um, this is from uh November twelfth from the Hollywood Reporter. The new season will follow the couple as Jonas Brothers finish their new album and head back on tour in three years. Danny also explores starting her own business back in New Jersey and the Jonas and Delusa families become closer. Executive produced by Ryan Seacrest, Married to Jonas drew 1.8 million total viewers when it launched on E in August. The half-hour series was the most watched program in its time period among women 18 to 34 in the 10 p.m. time slot by weeks two and three. Quote, we are excited to continue following Kevin and Danny's journey as they juggle love and marriage with pop superstardom and eager in-laws, says Lisa Berger, president of entertainment programming at E! Season 2 of Marriage Jonas will continue to solidify E!'s can't-miss Sunday night reality block. As we thought they might, Kevin and Danny Jonas proved both relatable and captivating to E! audience, says Seacrest. We're excited to continue chronicling their marriage and relationships with extended family and friends in season two. I expect they'll continue to charm and amuse people along the way, generating even more Jonas family fans. Oh my god. This is, this is, the I thought it was low business. before. This is like low. <laughs> I love that more people watched Married to Considerably Jonas. Considerably more people. Then listened to so wait 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 actually combined let's, nick and let's Jones let's off. let's do this let's do this right here let's i do, doubt even what is it one streamed either one their eight thousand divided by <laughs> twenty five thousand so 72 times more people watched <laughs> one episode of married to jonas than ever listened to joe jonas's album so, so I'm saying the fact that this is the, like a high point after their split. Yeah. So far. Well, it shows the changing taste levels where like people don't want to actually hear about the Jonas Brothers. It's this like nature of fame at that point for people of that generation where it was like, we don't want to fuck fuck your music. Go away. Why are you really why do you want to have music? Care about your art. Yeah. This is the real housewifeification of like 2000 celebrities where it's like I don't fucking care about your fucking music. Go on Real Housewives. Get a fucking TV show, right? I do think Danielle should go on Real Housewives of New Jersey. Like that would be iconic, Ooh, but That would be actually I would watch. I mean, Wait, I already Let me am. look. Danielle Delisa Real Housewives of New Jersey. <laughs> you're like what's ever... the tea? Andy, Andy, if you're listening. Oh, I guess she was offered Real Housewives of New Jersey. Shut up, really? That's crazy. I mean, Wait, she's like a perfect fit for the show. This honestly. year, I'd rather do Married to Jonas. <laughs> <laughs> so this was 2023. How many seasons did this fucking Danielle show Jonas go on won't for be making though? a return to reality TV anytime soon. She revealed that she was asked to join Real Housewives of New Jersey, but turned the opportunity down. Um, she appeared on the Lady Gang podcast. Quote, I was asked, no. but I think I would die. I think they would like, they would kill me. <laughs> it would be like bringing the lamb to slaughter over there. Uh, That's why it would be says, great. Um, that they would be able to uh, go. They'd rather go on their own show. I'd rather do Married to Jonas, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, I didn't realize, by the way, that like the se- the episode titles are all based in in-law jokes like yeah. dinner with the in-laws prom night with the in-laws texas with the in-laws in-law intervention okay by the way one episode emergency in-law episode five of season one got 2.21 million views that's actually pretty considerable by the end it only got like a mil though season two only had six episodes Oof. kevin did win Choice television Kevin male was on Real Housewives of New Jersey. Teen Choice Awards. He was on Real Housewives of New Jersey as Kathy's contractor. Wait, what? Wait, 
Kevin you would, you Jonas. Kevin Jonas. R H O N J. Oh my God, you're so right. How did I forget this? Wait, what epi- When was this in the series? Season six, episode eleven. Oh my God. Oh my yeah, God. I haven't gotten yeah. there yet. He literally builds them a house because he has that real estate business I talked about. That's I can't so wait. I need to binge. Wait, can I? Can we make this? There? Wait, can, can we make this our episode title? <laughs> Not our episode title, just the episode image. I just shared it with you. Can we make that the image to this episode? <laughs> <laughs> Why does this look photoshopped? It's not. It's not Photoshop. That's what they Photoshop? actually look like. That's what. That's what they actually look like. Okay, <laughs> let's get out of here, guys. So that's wow. all we've got for you today. Next week is the end of the Jonas Brothers. We have had such a good time doing it, and we just really love and support all of you guys for um, love and support all of you guys. We love all of you guys for the support and the love and all the comments that we get. Thank you so much. Um, and we are going to go back to doing a few sort of minor episodes to kind of pad out our, our um, impending Miley series that will carry us through the end of next year and into the new year. So look forward to that. Um, we got one left, as I said, of the Jonas Brothers. And then I'm thinking we might watch a few episodes of Married to Jonas and we might just start like recapping Married to Jonas on the, <laughs> on the Patreon. Episodes. Yeah. So oh, just like stay tuned God. for that. Um, you think it's low, we can go lower. Yeah, you think this is low, we can go Why lower. Why is this like Loki my favorite episode? <laughs> oh, 100%. I think it's because it's like Forgotten Era, you know? Yeah, no, this is the deep lore. This is the this is when the ancient <laughs> magics were being written. Um, also, there are 100% guaranteed actions happening in your community this week for Palestine look them up find your local palestinian coalition here in philly go to the philly palestinian coalition there are actions happening all over the place we cannot let the pressure off um you know especially in the wake of uh rashida Tlaib getting censured in congress so insane especially after rashida was um censured by congress for saying from the river to the sea this is not the time to bow down or bend to that. Uh, we must show a unified front for Palestine. We will continue to do so here on Eating for Free. And we urge all of you to get in touch with, you know, people people in your community. Um, we are blocking ports. We are showing up. We are in D.C. We are in front of the White House. We are in city halls. Um, we're not going anywhere. Um, nobody is free until Palestine is free. So just keep going. Um, because they don't have a choice, but to keep going either, you know, it's the least we can do. Um, and there's so much more to do still. So other than that, thank you all once again for tuning into this episode and, you know, we've got lots and lots of good stuff up on Patreon. Beautiful women updates is back. Um, we are back doing bonus episodes still. So, you know, Go subscribe if you'd like. Um, and let's get the fuck out of here. Let's get out of here. Three, two, two one. Go Gone to the year Bye. 3000. <laughs> Not much has changed, but, but Joe we... Jonas is on Real Housewives of New Jersey. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. You've been listening to Eating for Free, a podcast created, co-hosted, written, researched, and produced by myself, Joan Summers, and Matthew Lawson, with original theme music by Sam Huntington of Crooks and Nannies. If you liked what you heard today, you can go to patreon.com backslash eating for free to get access to weekly bonus episodes, as well as access to my other podcast, Beautiful Women Updates, hosted by myself and Alex V. Green. You can also go to eatingforfree.com to get access to the links to our research from today's episode, as well as merch and so much more. 